Hawaii looking for their 22nd win in a row. But why? This could be their toughest test yet. That's all coming up later in sports. And the Olympic flame is now making its way along Esser Road. And Barry, that's a live look there with an intermittent breakup. We'll consider uh, continue our extended live coverage of day 61 of the Olympic torch relay next on A News. at Blue Mountain. Watch A News for an inside look at the Ski Class Grand Prix. I'm Robin Monroe. I live in the city of Barrie. I'm chairman of the Barrie Jazz and Blues Festival. The festival attracts thousands of people to the area each year. Local TV has been instrumental in helping the festival grow and thrive. So we're talking about the Barrie Jazz and Blues Festival this year. Without local TV, the cultural activities of arts groups in the city would go unnoticed. If we lose local TV, we lose our voice. I'm Robin Monroe, and local TV matters to me. in the air. People are focused on what they're supposed to be doing, driving and not talking. They're going to be high risk. An A News special, the year in review 2009, Friday, January 1st. It's the big one and it's back. TA's Boxing Week blowout. Everything is marked down store-wide. Every major appliance, barbecue and gas fireplace. Choose the Designer Series from Viking. Beneath the sleek exterior, the Designer Series delivers heavy-duty culinary power. The complete Viking kitchen, completely different, now at TA. TA's Boxing Week blowout, it's the one sale everyone waits for. TA appliances, TA. This program is brought to you by ctvolympics.ca, Canada's most comprehensive Olympic site, featuring exclusive video and the latest news on Vancouver 2010. A crowd of thousands awaits at Barry City Hall for the arrival of the Olympic flame, the torch relay making its way tonight through the city of Barry. Welcome back to a new special extended coverage of day 61 of the Olympic torch relay. Just moments ago, the torch started the final leg of the day running through the city of Barry, beginning its journey on Essa Road by Ann Street, Graham Montgomery, the first of 13 torch runners who will carry the torch uh, through the city on its way to City Hall. Now, at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you can see right now, we'll keep that frame up for you as long as we can as we follow the torch every step of the way uh, through the hour and uh, until just past 7 o'clock when it's expected to arrive at City Hall. The torch uh, right now is roughly uh, 10 or so minutes away from Rob Cooper. He's uh, standing by live on Lakeshore Road at one of the handoff points where the torch will uh, pass from one runner to the next as it turns left to head up Victoria Street and on its way to Bradford. And uh, Rob Cooper standing by live on Lakeshore Road. Rob? Yeah, right in the intersection, Lance, of Lakeshore and Victoria. And well, let me walk over this way. You can see people are slowly starting to line the streets here in Barrie, all in anticipation of the flame's arrival. People taking pictures, getting excited. You can see Lakeshore is officially closed right now. Again, a very exciting time for a lot of people. I made a new friend over here, two of them, in fact, John and Mary Jane Dawson. They were actually at the Olympics in Atlanta. Was it 1996? Yes. Yes. And your most memorable experience of those games was perhaps not so memorable at all. Tell me no, about it. No, it wasn't. We were there when the bomb went off. Where and were you exactly? We were just on the train coming into the site, and uh, it was pretty scary. And what was your reaction then, Mary Jane, hearing that this bomb had gone off in the Olympics? Obviously, you and your husband were there for the Olympic Games, and, and all of a sudden it became very serious. Well, we weren't sure whether we should continue on down and, and go to the Olympics, but everybody said it would be okay, so, so we did. You were in the Olympics in 96 in Atlanta, and you're taking part again tonight simply by, by 
I'll get it out by being here, much like Absolutely. many Canadians, millions of Canadians yeah. doing this. Just a little difference in the temperature. Yeah. <laughs> Love the hat. <laughs> Enjoy the evening. Thanks Thank very you. much. John and Mary Jane Dawson, uh, just one of thousands of people who are not only here on Lakeshore, but of course outside City Hall as well, getting ready for what's going to be a fantastic night as we celebrate the Flames' arrival here in Barrie. Lance, let's go back to you in the News Centre. Thanks very much, Rob. As you saw, the uh, police cars pulling up and uh, sitting off Lakeshore uh, Drive in downtown Barrie. The relay uh, began about 11 hours ago on the southern shore of Georgian Bay. The first leg of today's relay began at Owen Sound before the first stop at Meaford, then it continued along the shoreline to Collingwood from there west to Elmvale, north to Midland. Then the flame passed through Creemore, Alliston and Cookstown before arriving, as you saw in Barrie, just a few minutes ago. We have stories from along the way now. Trina Moss was at the celebrations in Midland, while Roger Klein was there very early this very chilly morning in Meaford. The crowd start gathering before the sunrise on Meaford's main street. It's minus 14 and snowing, but that isn't stopping Charlotte Morrison from coming out with her niece and nephew to see the Olympic torch come through town. I couldn't get the doors open because it was frozen shut, so it was a bit of a hassle, but it'll be worth it, I'm sure. More than 1,500 people watch as the flame passes from one runner to the next on the front steps of Meaford Hall. Within minutes, the flame is back on the road. Dick Howlett says it's a fleeting moment with the flame, but he doesn't want to miss it. This is, uh, this is important because you only see it once in a blue moon, you know? So uh, you got to come out and support him. Thornbury is the next community where residents gather to get a glimpse of the relay. Judy Redford is impressed with the effort going into the 45,000 kilometer Canada wide journey. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I think the concept of crossing the country is just amazing. For Stuart Higginbotham, it's all about getting the perfect picture. Is that important to you? Or? Uh, yeah, because it's part of my Canadian heritage and I got a picture of the torch. This is the crowd that gathered in downtown Collingwood. Brian Rose is here to be part of the Olympic experience. He says the torch is engaging the entire country. Just because they saw this and they want to become part of it and they feel like they're part of it and then they'll just keep, keep that feeling going. Despite the wintry weather, the torch makes it to Wasaga Beach on schedule. <laughs> Carolyn Hall says it's great to see the flag and the display of national pride. Oh, well, it's time we stood up and waved the flag. The Americans do it all the time, and we're a better country. The entire world is watching with Sega Beach this morning. And the torch relay did create some traffic delays as it went from town to town today, but most were short-lived because the torch keeps moving. In Elmville, Roger Klein, A News. Sergeant Doug Jeffros is in his glory as he takes the Olympic torch for its final leg in Midland. And what makes it more special is that his mother is there to share the experience with him. It means the world. She, she was sick for weeks in the, in the hospital, but she got out and she got herself uh, well, and, and she's here. That's the main thing. The crowd cheers on the 30-year police veteran as he makes his way onto the stage. And also this year, ladies and gentlemen. It's a proud moment for Madeline Jeffros, who was released from the hospital this morning. Well, he came here and he gave me a kiss. That was a shock. I'm just glad I got out of the hospital in time to see him to do this. Thousands of people brave temperatures in the minus 20 range to watch the torch go through Midland. Many kids were so bundled up that all you could see was their eyes. Just moving around, just walking around, because it's really, it's really cold today. The crowd stayed warm by cheering, impressing Olympic organizers who have been on the torch run every step of the way. Midland was very loud. It's spectacular. In a community of this size to get this many people out, um, despite, you know, colder temperatures, some of the colder temperatures we face is absolutely remarkable. 86-year-old Camilla Murphy says nothing would have kept her from experiencing this moment. It's something that I've, I've always wanted all my life. And to think that I'm able to do this at this age, it's wonderful. We all told our, our story. While on stage, Sergeant Doug, as he's known in the community, he's dedicated his life to help out, took the opportunity to remind everyone that with hard work, anything is possible. 
To go through Midland, the torch passed hands 30 times and traveled 4.9 kilometers. It's estimated that almost 4,000 people lined the route.